Assalamualaikum and hi, Teacher Aisyah here. So today I will be presenting on topic tip 2. So first and foremostly, we will be going on through what is tip 2 or known as true walking. Tip 2 was a pattern of walking in which a child walks on the ball of their feet with no contact between the heels and ground. Tip 2 refers to a condition where a person walks on their toes without putting much or any weight on the heel or any other part of the, of the foot. This term also includes the inability to connect one's foot fully to the ground while in the standing phase of the walking cycle. Tip 2 is common in children who are learning to walk after the age of 2, however, most children outgrow true walking and begin to walk with a normal heel to heel, heel to two patterns. Okay, so what are the causes of tip two? Typically, tip two is a habit that develops when a child learns to walk. In a few cases, true walking is caused by an underlying condition such as short atrial tendon. Okay, calf muscles merge at the base of the calf where they turn into atrial tendon. Atrial tendon then joins heel bone. When calf muscles are used, the atrial tendon will pull on the heel. This tendon links the lower leg muscles to the back of the heel bone. If it's too short, it can prevent the heel from touching the ground. In some kids who tiptoe, this muscle tendon combination may have been shorter at birth. This isn't typically unless the child has a club foot or other congenital bone deformity. It may also shorten over time. This can prevent the child from touching their heels to the ground and walking flat foot, which is problematic and abnormal. Some older children who to walk may be doing it out of habit. They may also be doing it because the muscles and tendons in their calf have tightened over time. This makes it painful to walk in a heel to two manner, which is normal guide mechanics. Another causes were a brain disorder, which is cerebral palsy. Tip 2 or 2 walking associated with cerebral palsy presents with an abnormally short medial and lateral gastrocnemius and solace. The primary muscles involved in plantar flexion. Tip 2 can be caused by a disorder of movement, muscle tone or posture caused by injury or abnormal development in the parts of the immature brain that control muscle function. The tip 2 could be a compensatory movement due to weakened plantar flexion muscles. In people who have cerebral palsy and tip 2, there is greater plantar flexion force required for normal heel to toe walking than for toe walking. When typically developing children are tasked to perform different types of two walking, their two walking could not reduce the force to the levels that children who to walking or tip two with cerebral palsy have when they walk. This suggests that tip two associated with cerebral palsy may be due to abnormally weakened plantar flexion that can only manage two walking. Another tip 2 causes were autism spectrum disorder or known as ASD. Tip 2 happens more frequently in children with ASD than in children who don't have ASD. To walking has been linked to ASD which affects a child's ability to communicate and interact with others. One large study found that 9% of children on the spectrum were true walkers. The same study found that less than 0.5% of children without an autism diagnosis were, were, two walkers, were two walkers. The causes for this are unclear because there is no direct link between autism and two walking. It may be that tightened heel muscles restrict the range of movement in your child's ankles. Two walking with autism may also be sensory related. Many children with autism have a dysfunctional vestibular system. The vestibular system is responsible for providing your brain with feedback about motion, position, and spatial orientation. It may be responsible for two walking or tip two.
Another causes for chip two was a muscle or nerve disorder which is muscular dystrophy. Two walking sometimes occurs in this genetic disease in which muscles fibers are unusually prone to damage and weaken over time. This diagnosis might be more likely if your child initially walked normally before starting to, to walk. Okay, another while two walking in adults, other times walking on your toes as an adult begins for unknown reasons. Certain health conditions affecting your feet can sometimes cause two walkings. Corn, cellulosis, and peripheral neuropathy may all cause to walking. Some people walk on their toes into adulthood. They may have tried to correct their toe walking as a child but never outgrew it or treatment was ineffective. Okay. Another causes for tip 2 was idiopathic. Tip 2 is diagnosed after it continues past the age of 3. In this condition, children can voluntarily walk with the typical heel to pattern but prefer to walk on their tiptoes. For it to be considered idiopathic, the child's medical history should be clear at any neurological orthopedic or neuropsychiatric conditions including other guide abnormalities. Idiopathic tip 2 or two walking is always bilateral and has no orthopedic or neurological causes. It, it is thought to be related to sensory processing challenge. Two classifications of idiopathic to walking have been established, which is Alvarez classification that identifies the severity of the two walking based open kinematic and ankle rockers, while the Pomerino classification identifies the tip two or two walking according to the individual specific characteristics and characterize them into three types based on the sign presented. For idiopathic tip 2 in young children, health professionals may prefer to watch and wait as the child may outgrow the two walking with time. There are limited treatments that demonstrate long-term walking change. So after we're going through what is tip 2 and what are the causes of tip 2, we will be going through on diagnosis and test for tip 2. The physical one of it was physical examination. The physical exam will typically begin with the doctor observing your child walking. To avoid the doctor walk, the patient, which is the patient, does their best to walk properly when the doctor is watching. This may be done even before your child realizes that they are being observed. Okay, physical examination was doing to evaluate by the child's typical walk which is on the tooth and their best walk which is walking as flat, flat, foot, flat footed as possible. Okay. Physical examination to evaluate the smoothness of the walk as part of a neurological evaluation. Okay. Health providers will observe the child walking and assess for tightness in the calf. Okay. During the physical exam, the health providers will check the child's feet for abnormalities, including difference between the left foot and right foot, look for difference in leg length and in the size of the thigh and calf, assess for difference in leg length and in the size of the thigh and calf, assess if one or both calf muscles are tight by asking the child to move their feet and ankles in a number of different ways, check range of motion in the hips and knees, and look for any skin or other abnormalities in the lower extremities and back. As part of the exam, your child's provider will observe how your child walks. They will look for any issues with your child's feet or legs. They will also check for any limitation with your child's range of motion. Okay, another diagnosis or test for tip 2 was neurological exam. Your child's provider may perform neurological tests to see if your child has a problem with their nervous system. This test may include checking your child's reflex, measuring their ability to feel sensation in their arms or legs, and testing their muscle strength. 
okay neurological exam was done to determine whether abnormalities in the child's nervous system could be contributing to the two walking the exam will be tailored to the child's age developmental level and ability to cooperate during the neurological exam your child's provider will assess whether there is any contract contracture or excessive tightness of the muscles in the arms or legs check the strength of the major muscles check the child's reflex by tapping a small rubber hammer or a fingertip on different points on the body and test sensation or feeling in the arms and legs okay another diagnosis and test Usually, idiopathic true walking or tip 2 is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that no other problems can be identified from your child's medical history and physical exam. Okay, idiopathic tip 2 is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that no other problems can be identified from the child's medical history and physical exam. For this reason, specific tests will be done but are not usually ordered, which is x rays. CT and MRI, MRI scans and nerve and muscle tests involving electrode patches or needles. Okay, so lastly, we will be going on to the treatment for TIP2. Treatment to stop TIP2 depends on various factors including your child's age, how severe your child's to walking or TIP2 is and the underlying cause of the condition. Your child's healthcare provider will likely recommend non-surgical treatment first, which is including physical therapy. The child may work with a physical therapist to help stretch their calf and foot muscles. This can help release tension and increase their range of motion. Traditional physical therapy may include serial casting. With this approach, the child wears a series of walking casts over several weeks to stretch and lengthen their calf muscles and tendons. Okay, another treatment was ankle, ankle foot orthotics, which is leg braces. The child may wear a plastic leg brace that keeps their foot at a 90 degree angle to stretch and lengthen their calf muscles and tendons while they walk throughout the day. This will be coordinated with a physical therapist and an orthotist, which is a healthcare provider that specializes in making splints and braces. Okay, another treatment was observation. The child's provider may recommend a wait and see approach to see if the condition improves on its own. They will use this approach for no more than six months. Okay. Other treatment was botulinum toxin, which is a botox, a botox. The child may receive botox injections to weaken their calf muscles and make them easier to stretch. Botox therapy may be used to paralyze the calf muscles to reduce the opposites of the muscles to work harder. This may be used with serial casting or splinting. However, one small study has shown this has limited impact. Okay, another treatment was surgery. If conservative, which is non-surgical that has been said before this, such as physical therapy, ankle foot orthotic leg braces, or Botox, measures do not help with changing the walking or making the calf muscles longer and correcting the two walking after about 12 to 24 months. Surgical lengthening of the tendon is an option. The surgery is typically done under full anesthesia, but if there are no issues, the child is released the same day. After the surgery, a below-the-knee walking case is often worn for six weeks and then an AFO is worn to protect the tendon for several months. The surgery often suggests to the child older than five. Their healthcare provider may recommend surgery to loosen and lengthen their calf muscles and HL tendon. This surgery will help improve their range of motion and foot and ankle functioning. Okay, another additional treatments for two walking in children may include 
prism lens, which is an eye doctor may prescribe ambient prism lens. Prism, prism lens can help improve the child's perception of where their body is in relation to their surroundings. And lastly, vestibular sensory therapy, which is the child may see an occupational or a physical therapist to stimulate their vestibular system. So that's all from me on topic tip 2. Thank you for listening.